Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today is a very special day. You know, for years through the miracle of television, I've, I've been able to share my joy of painting with literally millions of people. And today I have the opportunity to share the joy of my life. I have my son Steve here today with me. And today Steve's going to be our guest artist. And in just a few minutes, he's going to show you how to do a fantastic painting. Steve, certainly glad to have you with us, my son. Thanks, Tell man. you what, you do a super little painting and I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, we're going to start off today by running the colors across your screen. And I'm going to use a two inch brush for my first color, which will be alizarin crimson, just a tiny amount of it. And I'm tapping it out on a separate space on the palette, trying not to get too much in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in the center. Well, just about like that. And then into a little bit of Prussian blue with the same dirty brush. And back through my alizarin. Should have kind of a lavender color. And we'll just X that right in there too. Keep that brush moving. Okay, and maybe a little bit more of that alizarin and blue color. And we'll put a little bit of water down here. Just straight horizontal strokes from the outside in. Okay, we could even have a little hint of pink in the water too if we wanted. Not Wow, got the water on fire that time, didn't we? Whew. We can take care of that though. When we come back with a, another clean, dry two inch brush and blend all this out. Little X's. If you push real hard on a color, it'll disappear. Kind of softens it down. So in the sky, you're doing little X's. And in the water, all the way across. Push real hard. Okay, better to do it for the sky and water. Maybe I'll use my fan brush now and just to drop a liquid white and run through some thick titanium white. Mostly thick stuff here. Okay, and then up to the canvas. And we'll spin in a little cloud. Just using the corner of the brush, smash it right in there. Nothing to it. Then we'll just take a clean brush and blend out the bottom of that. Big brush. I usually use my big brushes for blending and my small ones for more scratchy choppy things like bushes and trees. Okay, just lift over that whole cloud very lightly and go across it. I'm trying to keep the brightest points on top. And if you want to make one cloud in front of another, Maybe you just take this piece right here and pull it down. Still using your spinning maneuver there. And maybe there's even something small right here. Okay, just under the bottom of each shape. Spin it out, leave the top alone lift over the whole thing and go across it. Okay. Now maybe we'll do a couple of uh, foothills in the background. I'll use my fan brush again for that. That color will be alizarin crimson, 
just mixing it on the brush and a little bit of Prussian blue. Prussian blue is real powerful. With that, you can put a little titanium white too. Make it a light color for the background. So you get sort of a lavender. And we'll throw this in about right back in here. Fill it in a little bit. Don't just leave a straight stripe of color. There's a curve to it here too. Whatever you want to do. And then just take your big brush and knock off the bottom of that shape. Leave the top alone. Maybe there's a tiny bit more pink under that foothill. Kind of the sun, the sun reflecting off the bottom of it or something. Let's see, something like that. And then who's to say there's not another one in front of that that's a little darker. So yeah, just a little bit more alizarin and blue to the color. Okay, and maybe this one will come down like this and right across. Once again, fill it in. Oh, just like that. And then knock off the bottom of that one too. It's pretty neat how you can get one shape in front of another to look like planes of distance going from back to front. Maybe I'll just brush over the top of that one a tiny bit. Okay, why don't we go with our one inch brush now. A little bit of Prussian blue, midnight black, crimson, and white all together. So it's just the same color as you used before, but with a little black in it. Okay. Maybe right down here we've got a row of grassy type areas. Leave a little mist in between this shape and your foothills. That'll make them look further back. Don't really have to pay a lot of attention to how you put the dark in on here. It's all going to be covered up anyway. Okay, and then I'll clean that one inch brush out. And maybe we'll put a little bit of snow highlight on that, just with titanium white. Tap it into the paint a little bit, and then right up here, just touch it in. All kinds of neat things happen. Looks just like little pieces of sparkly ice fog all over the grass and trees. And don't just stop there, tap under it a little bit too. That way it looks like it's going from light to dark. And then reload and you can make another one. Now maybe we want to take the big brush and pull a reflection out of that. Just grab the bottom of it, pull right down. You might have to add just a touch of your color. Same foothill color. Try to pull that straight down. And then go across it with a clean dry brush. Two inch. If you get a hair in there, you can just kind of flick it out sometimes. Not a good idea to stick your fingers in your painting though. Now I suppose since our reflections are down so low, we should have some pine trees up above them. Uh, 
little bit of crimson and blue together again with the midnight black. And that does have a touch of white in it. Okay, come up here, maybe just touch in and with the corner of the fan brush, hop back and forth from the left to the right. Kind of like a Z pattern. You can make as many of these as you want, but I'm probably only going to put, oh, maybe five or seven. This little guy over here is going to get covered up because we're going to have a bigger tree. Right over him, probably. Let's see. Maybe one more right here. And you can always clean your brush out and put a little highlight on those if you want. That would just be back into the titanium white. Whatever fashion you put the trees in, you want to highlight them the same way. So press in like that and then come up there. That way when it comes off your brush, it doesn't come off in one big lump. Sometimes it's more important what happens on those brushes on the palette than what happens with the brushes on the canvas. And that highlight, I'm just putting it on the right hand side of the left hand trees and right around the center of the right hand trees. Let's see. Maybe there's a little bit of that white grass underneath those too. Snow covered grass. You could even pull down a tiny white reflection into that. And go across that real light. Now that kind of looks like it's floating up in the sky. So uh, what we need to do is put a little land under that. And you can do that with your knife. A little bit of black and alizarin together for some dark. And I'll just run a little strip of land right across there. Nothing to that part, as long as you don't get it too wide. And then maybe back into a little bit of titanium white. Splat it out flat, pull through it, get a nice roll on there, and kind of pull across. And that'll give you some snow. There we go. Well, that looks kind of rough when you first do it, so you might want to put a little grass on top of that. Maybe a little liquid white and titanium together to get it to stick on top of there. Remember, thin paint sticks on thick. Okay. Just follow the angle of the land. There we go. Now, it seems like everything above the water has to have that small reflection. So let's go ahead and pull a land reflection too. Try to get it straight down. That also helps straighten up the bottom edge of the land so that your water line can go under it more evenly. It saves you a lot of time. A little bit of liquid white on the palette knife and we'll spin that around on the palette. Wipe some of it off and get a little tiny roll on there. Then we'll go up here and just push in. Now try to keep this as straight as possible because this is an icy lake and still water or still ice always lies flat. Maybe there's a couple out here too. Something like that. Now, who's to say we don't want to 
come in with a couple trees on the outside with just our plain old Prussian blue and alizarin crimson together. And then we'll come in from over here and just tap in some big branches. Doesn't have to be anything particular. We're gonna cover it all up with highlights anyway. Okay, maybe over on this side there's something similar to that, but not quite as big. Now when you're going through snow, it might be a little more difficult, but just keep reloading that brush. It'll go in there eventually. Maybe this one comes out onto an island with some bushes just by smashing in. Something like that. Okay. Now we probably need a reflection of this piece of land, just like the one in the background. Oh no, we hit our ice line over there. Look at that, we'll have to make that go away. Kind of an eraser mate brush if you want it to be. Maybe there's a few sticks in those bushes. It's little V's. And in those trees, we probably want to plant a few branches with our liner brush and a little bit of that purple color that we made before with the blue and the alizarin. Probably should be pretty dark. Lots of paint thinner. Takes probably about five or six drops. About Indian ink consistency. Okay, let's see. Maybe we got some branches just coming right out of the tree. I'm not really worried too much about what they look like. They're all going to be covered up. The snow in a minute. Over here, the same deal. I get kind of carried away with these branches sometimes. They're so fun to make that you just don't know when to stop with them. So I better stop now. We can go in with some snow highlight on top of that. A little bit of liquid white and titanium white together. Push that brush into the paint. Get some little tidbits of paint on the tips of the bristles there. And that way they'll come off real sparkly. Look at that. Sometimes you can almost amaze yourself. But if you have a happy accident, that's no problem. You can always go back and take something off and smash the dark color back in. Start over again. That's just like getting two canvases worth of practice for the price of one, I guess. That's what I tell my students in painting class when they have to scrape something off. No big deal, just more practice. Those trees really change a lot once you get those highlights in, don't they? Sometimes a fast pace is even better than a slow pace. Things seem to come out better the less you piddle on them. If I stick around in one area, I know I really end up with a mess. Maybe we'll change the load to a pulling through the paint with the brush vertical, like this. See that heel in the brush? Now we'll flip that up to the top and push in there real lightly and make some bushy shapes. 
Now it's a little bit harder to separate uh, when you're just using blue and white. If you've got a lot of other colors, it's, it's a lot easier. So take your time and save dark in between each bush. Then we can pull that down with a clean two inch brush and go across it. All I did was made upside down bushes in the water there. Maybe down here into this island, we'll just have a little bit of regular snow. Don't even need a shadow under it. We've got enough right here. Touch and pull. And that's all there is to it on that. Maybe a little piece comes up like that too. I've still got some paint on my liner brush. I could flick a couple sticks in. And then back to the one inch brush for a little bit of grass on the land. Just trying to break up that top edge. Now, as with the piece of land in the background, under this one you're gonna need a shoreline. That was the liquid white again. Just like that. And then maybe I'll get a little crazier down on this right hand side. Possibly just go into some pure midnight black, if you can believe that one, and just pop it right in there. I get to a certain point in the painting and my bravery increases about 100%. This is that point. Because I know no matter what I do, it's going to look at least halfway decent. <laughs> After you practice this style of painting for a while, you learn all kinds of neat things. Like um, any brush can really, you know, replace the job of another one. I could have done that with a one inch brush or the fan brush. More little V's down here in my bushes. And some highlights again with the one inch brush. Need a little bit of liquid white in that. Thin sticks to thick. And in a second here, I'll show you how to do a big tree. Who knows, maybe there's a touch of pink in a bush. A little bit of crimson added to that will really help. Hey, why not? Maybe the sun hit just right that day, right on those bushes. Well, heck, I think there's an oval under here somewhere. Wow, that changed it a little bit, didn't it? Now what if we take the fan brush and come in with a big trunk? Van Dyke Brown and Midnight Black. I'm loading it up to a chisel edge, and then I'm just gonna pull right down from about here, right off the top of the canvas. Now that takes guts, which we have plenty of, right? I always tell my students there's nothing we can't do. Maybe a little bit of titanium white, just on the left-hand side, pull in. Just a little bit at a time and create a birch tree. Yeah, I always told Dad this is my favorite type of tree. He had a hard time getting it through my head what to do on him though. I always seem to push too hard. It's kind of like the snow breaking on the mountain. Liner brush and a little bit of midnight black. And we can throw in a couple of dead branches. Not too many though. <clears throat> Just like that. Extend your tops. Looks like I got a little bit of blue in there. 
That's okay though. Since it's my world, it can look like anything I want it to. That's the way you should think about yours too. This might be the only chance a person gets to uh, play God right here. Because we know we could never meet up to that job. But this might be as close as you can get. So why not? Well, I think that just about does it. Maybe a, a bush under that tree, just to close it off. And I should probably put a John Henry on this one. A little bit of bright red, just like Dad uses. <coughs> and there we go. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining the show today. And I hope you had as good a time painting this picture as I did. Thank you.